Amen. Excited for what God is doing tonight. Um, give an honor to our pastor and our first lady. They are awesome. We have the best pastor and first lady. They are so awesome. I never take it lightly when it's time to, to minister before God's people. Um, let's go ahead. Let's get started here. During every Christmas season, there is always great excitement and anticipation over the one day of the year where more gifts are exchanged than at any other date on the calendar. Normally, the gifts which are given soon lose their luster and replace by the next year's motto. As Christians, we, are, we must remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Somebody say that. Say, Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. I was listening to, um, um, I listened to Caleb and um, some guy he called and he said, I just wanted to call you guys and let you know I was out there shopping and it was just so, you know, crazy out there. And I just went to my car and I just did my breathing and I just took some breaths and I, I listened to Caleb. And he was just stressing out, you know. <laughs> Amen. We shouldn't feel like that. Amen. <laughs> Therefore, in this series, uh, we will highlight three special gifts of God available to everyone on the planet. Amen. We're gonna, these are the scriptures that we're going to be focusing on. Um, and we're going to be talking about the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a gift from God. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this night. Lord, we come here, Lord, expecting and anticipating something great from you. Lord God, I pray that you would strip me out of the flesh. I'm just a man. But God, I pray that you would speak through me and speak to us, that you would change us, Lord. We're not coming just to hear the word, but to be doers of the word. You're calling us into action, Lord. Every single one of us, Lord. As we receive this word today, I pray, Lord God, that it would change our lives. And it would give us, Lord God, a closer, Lord God, touch, Lord God, to what you are doing in this generation. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and read some scriptures here, starting with John chapter 14, verse 16 through 17. Um, it's right there on your handout, and I will try to follow the handout. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be a preaching teaching. Amen. We're talking about the Holy Ghost is going down. All right. So this is Jesus speaking, and I will pray the Father, talking to his disciples, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. He said, you're with me right now. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. As we continue um, throughout that chapter, go to verse 25. He says, um, these things have I spoken to you, Jesus speaking, to his disciples, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, right, which is the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, the name of what? Jesus. The name of the Father is Jesus. He shall teach you all things. So the Holy Ghost, it teaches you things. It's the Spirit of Jesus. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. And as we go to the book of Acts and we see Jesus had already died, he was buried, he rose again, he went back and he began to minister to the disciples and open up the scriptures to them more fully. And then they asked him a question after he was um, ascending. And this is where we're at in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 through 5. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he saith, um, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days um, hence. And then we go to verse 8, Jesus speaking again. He told them, but ye shall receive power 
after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, so when the Holy Ghost falls there, and in Judea, it spreads, and in Samaria, the outside lands, and to the uttermost parts of the world, amen. We're going to be talking about the Holy Ghost. Woo! Yes, it's here this Wednesday, amen. Every day we talk about the Holy Ghost, but to have a Bible study on the gift of the Holy Ghost, Amen. First of all, I want you to think about a gift. Everybody close your eyes. Amen. I want you to think if money was not a problem, if you, could, if you didn't worry about money, what's something, the best gift, I know, just the, the best gift in this natural world that you can get if money was not a problem? Think about that. If you want to write it down, think about it. Think about how it makes you feel. I know you're getting spiritual. That's good. We're getting there. <laughs> think about how that gift makes you feel. Think about when other people see that gift and they're just like, amen. Think about how that feels. You know when you have a birthday party and you got these nice gifts, like my daughter just had a birthday party, and you see this one big old gift that um, her, her, um, her uncle bought for her, and it was a bike. You know, you see those big, big gifts? Amen. We were leaving. You can open your eyes. <laughs> you got to do that, huh? You're still closing your eyes. Okay. Um, we were leaving the place. And um, they were like, do you got everything? I was like, yeah. They said, what about that big bike? I think you're leaving now. <laughs> you can't leave the biggest gift, right? <laughs> That's the best gift, you know. She's riding her new little bike and it is everything. But anyways, that feeling that you have when you've gotten a great gift, the greatest feeling that you can have, right? Man, what's better than that is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everything that we read about, that you talk about, that you hear about when it comes to God, imagine that package is open up inside of you, living and breathing and moving. You have 100% every second of the day access to the spirit of the living God. We have access to the Holy Spirit of God. That means more than religion, more than tradition, more than ritual, more than just some words on a page or on a book, more than just doing some sacrifice. We have the spirit of the living God, just like the trees, they have life in the birds. And we have the spirit of the living God inside of us and access to him by faith through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the Old Testament, um, God spoke to people in many different ways, of course, and we see that in the Garden of Eden, especially, we see God speaking out loud to them, and God speaking over time to people through their conscience. He still speaks in that still small voice to us. Um, God spoke um, even to Moses and the children of Israel, and they wrote down the law on stone, right? And um, as time went on, we continue to see God speaking to them through the building of the tabernacle and what all that represented and the different pieces and the, the different rituals and things. But God was speaking, and he had priests. And he would speak to his people through priests and through the prophets and through great leaders and prophetess too, right? Women of God, right? And we hear God's voice coming in many different ways and ways that God spoke to people, even with the building of the temple with Solomon. And, and God, God speaks to people. And then we see eventually God became flesh as Jesus Christ. And walking on this earth, the life of Jesus Christ, the works of Jesus Christ, it represented the spirit of God in action in the person of Jesus Christ walking the earth, showing us everything about the invisible God made visible and manifest in Jesus Christ. We see the spirit of God not just moving upon the waters as Jesus walked on the waters, but we see him healing the sick, right? We see him opening the eyes of the blind and open up the ears of those that were deaf, right? Ministering to the multitudes and showing compassion on people and revealing the truths of the word of God, amen? The spirit of truth, comforting people, right? Leading people to victory, to hope, to joy, to peace right we're talking about Jesus Christ the spirit of the living God in flesh in human work clothes amen and then finally he's talking about you know what I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to leave you and everybody start getting insecure and they're like what are you talking about they're like hold up even Peter was like no and he said I have to rebuke you no I'm come to go to the cross because I'm going to die and then I'm going to resurrect and then I'm going to send back a comforter I'm still going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I didn't start all this work and this relationship to put it on pause and just, okay, God's on vacation. No, he said my whole goal, as the Old Testament stated in Jeremiah in 31, he talked about I've loved you with an everlasting love, and therefore by my loving kindness have I drawn thee. But later around verse 20-something, he begins at 31 or something like that, he begins to talk about how one day I'm going to write my laws 
in your hearts, in the tablets of your hearts. I'm going to have a new covenant with you. You're not going to just go to the, the, the different rituals and go to the priest and hear from the prophets. I'm going to put my spirit in you, and I'm going to write my laws in your hearts. Amen? And then we see the fulfillment of that, that on the day of Pentecost, when they were right there, and they were in one mind and one accord, and suddenly there was a sound as a mighty rushing wind, right? And the Holy Ghost set upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in new tongues. The Spirit of the living God fell upon them. That comforter, that Holy Ghost, that action, that activated them into action to live for God and represent him and not deny him. Amen? We're talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, I want to be in you, but I have to go, and then I'm going to send the comforter. So that's some history there. So, hallelujah, we need the special gifts that only God can give us, right, to cure our sin problem. And we know that the first one is the word of God, right, when God speaks in who God is and a word became flesh and we, we stand on a word. One day heaven and earth is going to pass away, but the word is what's going to stand. You're going to be talking about that next week. Um, the blood, it had to be a sacrifice. Without the shedding of blood, um, there would be no remission of sin. So we have to get the blood, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, and no, that's what we talked about last week. I want to put some emphasis on that. And then also the spirit, which we're talking about today. But a little more emphasis before you get to the spirit, we went through, we have to have the blood. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, as Romans chapter 3 verse 23 states. We know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Now the blood of Jesus paid our ransom. To be set free from spiritual prison. His sacrifice made atonement for the sins of all humanity and opened up our prison doors so that we can be free. His blood was the down payment, the monthly installments, <laughs> and also the payoff of our spiritual debt. His blood shed at Calvary justified us and declared us righteous before God by faith. We are free to receive God's amazing grace by faith through his name. As the scripture says, um, and neither is there salvation in any other name but by the name of Jesus, right? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And in John chapter 1, verse 12, it talks about as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So life as a Christian first starts with understanding the power of the blood of Jesus. What he did at Calvary, his death, his burial, his resurrection. No human being could be ever get to the point of receiving the Holy Ghost without the blood that was shed at Calvary by Jesus. He shed blood for every soul that ever lived, that was ever born, and that will be born on earth. Victory over death and the grave, the salvation of all mankind, is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. We are weak and hopeless against sin without him. This is why Jesus told his disciples to go to Jerusalem until they receive power from the Holy Ghost. God knew that they would need the Holy Spirit as a special gift to comfort, to guide, to teach, and to empower. So, as I'm still getting warmed up here, we're going to go to some questions. Amen. First question. Why does every human being need the gift of the Holy Spirit living on the inside? Well, we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, on the inside, one is to be made alive, and the life of the of, to get eternal life, to have eternal life, to be made alive by God, and two, well, there's many reasons, but when the Lord comes to catch us in the air, He, we are those who are have the Spirit, will be caught up to meet Him in the air. Amen. 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 That's why they say revive us again. Amen. That's that life line. Hallelujah. One more person. I believe that we, that individuals need the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit is what changes our lives when he comes inside of us and also um, helps us to hear the heartbeat of God so that we know what the Lord wants us to do. Hallelujah. Help us to hear the heartbeat of God. The Holy Spirit is a promise. God said we all need to receive it. It's a promise to all of us. 
So that's all of us. It's not just you or you or you. It's a, it's a promise to all of us. And, and like the sister said, it changes us. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you have something, Natalie? No? Okay. Something from the, from the hyphen <laughs> representing. <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit is actually the gift that you were talking about. We, you know, on Christmas time, we all want gifts, material things. But the real gift is, is the Holy Spirit. And he enables us to do anything that we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. Amen. He enables us. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop us right there. This is all awesome. Sorry, we got to keep keep going. Um, second question: How does God use the gift of the Holy Ghost to change people's lives? Maybe that one you can do. Because the Holy Spirit will bring conviction, not condemnation. There's a difference, but conviction where we may have once not known the difference between sin in God's eyes or sin in our eyes. We kind of justify the little things. For example, if I didn't go to the store and steal something, maybe just took a pen off of a desk, we may not look at taking the pen off of a desk and walking out the door with it as a sin. But in the eyes of the Lord, that is still stealing. It didn't belong to you. And so the Holy Spirit will bring that conviction in your heart. You'll walk away with it in your hand thinking, this really doesn't belong to me. I've got to take that back. That is stealing. Amen. Amen. A spirit of truth. You know the difference between the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. Amen. Question number three. In what ways, it's kind of similar, has God, making it personal, used the gift of the Holy Ghost to change your life? You can't tell it like I can. Where's that person at tonight? We've got to get somebody else, but it's good. Stay right. Keep that excitement. Somebody else. Somebody else. Come on. Come on. Brother B. Okay, here we go. I will got you, Brother Ian. Well, for me, um, when I got the Holy Spirit, it made me more compassionate made me feel more humility for myself and love for other people. Amen. The fruits of the spirit. Amen. It's not just rolling around and everything. We need that though. Bring that back. But it's the, the fruit afterwards, your character. Amen. For me, so uh, one of the ways that the Holy Ghost has changed my life is through life insight. You know, um, making choices, just life insight. Who's who? What? What is a man? What is a woman? You know, what is the life insight? That's the Holy Ghost changed my life. Amen. Amen. Wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. We're gonna stop right there. All right, it's time to preach. Here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So eight thoughts about the gift of the Holy Ghost. Number one, the gift of the Holy Ghost is real. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Is real. There are people that are of the opinion that we're making this stuff up. We're just trying to be happy. You're at the gym or something. You're just liking to move around and do tricks and stuff. No, this is real. This Holy Ghost is real. We're not just sweating and getting hot and trying to make some stage for ourselves. No, this Holy Ghost stuff is real. Amen. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when he said, after the Holy Ghost has come, you shall receive power. Just as much as that weakness and the sin and struggle is real and pain is real, this Holy Ghost is that real fulfillment to help us with those voids and those pains and those troubles. It gives us power. They talk about weeping may endure for a season, but joy comes in the morning. That's through the power of the Holy Ghost. They talk about they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Life knocks you down. You're trying to get back up. And, and some of the philosophies of the world, it doesn't work. That things happen. Um, blah, blah, blah. No, no, I need, I need some power. And that power comes from the Holy Ghost. And the disciples, they needed to get back up. They were weak. They were like the Savior of the universe, the Almighty God, Christ, the Anointed One. He was with us, but he's gone. What are we going to do? I see doom. I see gloom. I don't have any hope. He says, don't worry. I'm going to give you hope in your situation. Don't worry. I'm going to bring you peace. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to send my spirit. 
This is going to be real. Just like this emptiness and this void that you're filling, knowing that my presence is here and I'm leaving and you're saying, I felt powerful when you were with me, when you were walking with us, when you were talking with us. I can see glimpses of victory, but I can't do it without you. He says, I understand. I'm with you right now, but I need to be in you. I need to go so that I can send my spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to play that song. It's an old school song, an old Pentecostal song. It says, it's real, it's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal experience, I know, I know it's real. Play that. It's an elder that wrote this song. Um, it's from back in the days. Listen to the words. When first I heard of Pentecost, I thought it was a shame for such an holy teaching to be taught in Jesus' name. They said it was a Bible, and I didn't want to doubt. So I went out to see them and to hear them sing and shout. Oh, it's real, it's real, I know it's real. Cost a blessing, and I know I know it's real. It's real, it's real. I know it's real. This penny cost a blessing, and I know I know it's real. Some were shouting hallelujah, some are prostrate on the floor, some are dancing in the spirit from the pulpit to the door. They were quaking, they were shaking, as one by one they fell. And when I saw that brother shake, I thought he had a spell. But it's real, it's real, I know it's real. It's pity of no blessing, and I know I know it's real. It's real, it's real, I know it's real. This penny cost a blessing, and I know I know it's real. So I sat a little longer, wondering what my folks would say. I knew they did not like them in the penny cost away. For just a day or two ago, I heard my daddy say that when he got religion, he didn't act that way, but it's real, it's real, I know it's real. That penny cost a blessing, and I know I know it's real. It's real, it's real, I know it's real. This penny cost a blessing, and I know I know it's real. Hallelujah. So I started to the altar. With a hunger Boy. in my soul, I didn't care who saw me. The Spirit bade me go. And I raised my hands to heaven. And I let God have his way. Let God have his way. And praise the Lord, he filled me in this pity. Cost a way. Hallelujah. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. It's pity. Cost a blessing. I know, I know it's real, it's real, it's real, I know it's real, this penny cost a blessing, and I know, I know it's Hallelujah. real, Hallelujah. Go to praise him. Hallelujah. it's real. And um, of course we all got different ways of talking and so forth, but to see an elder Live for God all these years and, and still saying it's real. Because when you get the Holy Ghost, people start coming up and all these random folks are saying, that's not real. The enemy start making you doubt. But when you've experienced it and you know that you know and nobody can talk you out of it, they may not understand it in the college. They may not understand it at your job site. But you know that you know that you know that it's real. Hallelujah. So first of all, you got to understand when you get a gift, right, it's not just sitting there. You're just like, it's just an empty bag. <laughs> it's all bluff. It's all hype. 
just all packaged up, looking religious, a form of godliness, but no power. Like it's not real. You getting dressed up and singing songs and, you know, just going back, doing the same thing. It's not really real. Uh Uh-uh, this isn't that place. (laughs) That may be some other religion or stuff that's just made up, socially constructed with man's hands and minds over time, just keeping something going. No, this is the real deal. It's got some substance. So first understand what we're seeing here, uh, when we talk about the Holy Ghost, it's a real gift and it's real and it works. Amen? Amen. Number two, there is more to the gift of the Holy Ghost than what you've heard. There's more to the gift of the Holy Ghost than what you've heard. Thank God. Yes, the evidence of speaking, uh, receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we see that, observe that throughout the book of Acts. And there's that aspect, and that's important. Your spirit praying to God and so forth, and all that is good, right? And sometimes just what people see, no, 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 no. It's more than that. On the day of Pentecost, after the Holy Ghost fell, we see chapter 2, verse um, 6. People start wondering, what is this, right? They're hearing stuff. They're seeing stuff. And in verse 6, now when this was noised abroad that the Holy Ghost fell, and the multitudes um, came together and were confounded. They were confused because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these speak all these um, speak Galileans? These which speak Galileans. And now, or how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Figuria, figure, <laughs> sorry, speaking Spanish <laughs> or Italian or something, uh, Figaia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya, not Libya, but Libya, Lib, Libya and Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, do hear them speak. In our tongues, the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt. Some were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? What is this? Is this stuff real? What's going on? I don't understand what's going on. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They're drunk. This stuff isn't real. What are they doing? Are they making this stuff up? Then Peter Okay, he walked with Jesus. He remembered what the Lord said. Wait until the promise comes. This was something new. This was not anything they received before. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose. Let me tell you what this is. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall have visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants... And on my handmaids, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. He said, this is real. This was prophesied. This was foretold that I would speak with you, and and people with stammering lips would I speak to my people. This is real. It's not just popping up out of nowhere. This was prophesied from the beginning. And God is looking for someone that when they're mocking and they're saying, what are you doing all this church stuff and all this moving around and sweating and jumping and praising? And people are doubting. They're saying, what's going on? And you say, well, let me tell you, man, this is real. I just got to praise them. The scripture says, to bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. He's really done something for me. It's not about my beat. It's not about how good I sing. I just, I'm so blessed and this is real. My heart beat for God. This relationship, this truth, what's pumping inside of me, this Holy Ghost, how he changes lives and changes people. This is real. Who's going to be that spokesperson to stand up and begin to say it's more than what you heard? Amen. It's more than what you think is inside of this. So, you know, you, you get a gift and you're like, okay, okay. What's in here? A little gift or something. Let's see what's in this one, you know? All right. So you say, all right. I hear if you get the Holy Ghost, like you're happy. 
So you just, you know, you just stay, you're a happy person now. That's good. I can settle with that. I'm happy. You know, you get one little gift. You're like, yeah, I got joy. And how many of you guys, you can, that's good, like to have the joy of the Lord, right? I can take that, right? All right, you find out there's more. And this is, sister, one of the sisters got this from my daughter, but she had like 20 little things in there. My daughter, every little thing, she just loved it, right? <laughs> and you get something else. This is like a little tissue thing. And, and, and you're like, man, I got peace. I mean, at first in the road, when things go bad, you know, I would just go drink and go crazy. I didn't necessarily. But different things, right? And then you say, but man, now I got this peace. Man, I don't have to uh, um, go out there and do what I used to do, right? I don't have to go to those girls. I don't have to go to the party and try to get away from stress. Man, I got this peace, and I can deal with that, amen? But then the more you stay with the Lord, you start finding out there's so much in this package of the Holy Ghost, stuff that you didn't even know. I'm like, I used to be broke, man. God showed me how to make some money, man. This Holy Ghost, man, got me all motivated out there hustling. There's all kind of stuff. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about, right? It's real. And it's more than what people have said. And don't settle just for my words or somebody else's testimony. When you jump in this stuff and you start tasting and seeing that the Lord is good and how good this Holy Ghost is, you become your own commercial of what God has done. And you go and you tell it on a mountain. You can't hide it under no bushel. You go and you sit on a hill and you say, let me tell you about how good this Holy Ghost is. And we need those stories. We need those testimonies. We need some fresh news. We need some new people catching some fish talking about you went deep sea fishing it's not enough for me or a couple ministers or people to come up and talk about what they've done what missionary journeys we've been on every single person in here you have an assignment you have something to show the world that it's more than what you've heard let me tell you about my life let me tell you about his handprint let me tell you about the fingerprint of God on my life and what he's done how real it is the more people hear it over and over that's how we change the world. What happens is we only get a few people talking about it, and they say, oh, that's all that that's about? No, nah, man, there's more. Who wants to hear some more? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. The apostles' practice of faith drastically changed after they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Throughout the book of Acts, we see people receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we get to experience through their lives how they changed their homes, their towns, and their cities. It just kept growing and expanding and their influence. The gift of the Holy Ghost activated the movement of the gifts of the Spirit. We start seeing people being used in the, in the gifts of the Spirit and God moving and giving people words of comfort, exhortation, so many things. Um, power over sickness and disease and demons. Uh, being able to move with the preaching of the word boldly. The same power and access that Jesus had when he walked the earth was transferred to the believers when they received the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Number three, the gift of the Holy Ghost is the best gift we could ever receive. It's worth being excited about. Amen? The best gift. You know, when you have a gift... And, and, you know, it's one thing where you say, oh, I'm just, that's just nice. That's nice. You gave me a little something. And, you know, it's nice just to even get something. The older you get, you stop getting stuff. So anything you get, most of my gifts come from my mother-in-law or from pastors. Sister <laughs> Delgado. Um, I mean, like, we talk about these type of gifts, like somebody give you a gift card or give you a, a something, right? But the ideal of, like, man, you know, when you're younger, you're like, man, I got the best gift. When you have that feeling of, like, man, I got the best gift. And that's what it is. Like the Holy Ghost, like this is the best gift. Thank God you may get a truck, you got a car. We got a minivan. Man, I love that new minivan. I'm just like, yeah, I like it better than my charger that I used to have because I get to go fit all the kids. I could put my jacket up in a certain place and the kids don't have to touch it. You know, I'm just like, somebody can come and trade me and be like, you want this charger or you want this minivan? I'm like, I'll take my minivan any day, baby. <laughs> you know, it's the best gift for me right now. I love it, the space, right? We're all traveling. Anyway, this, I got the little TV in there. It's the best gift, right? And that's what you got to think with the Holy Ghost, man. This is the best thing that has ever happened. Hey, man, you got that new job promotion. Okay, that's all good. Hey, man, you got the Holy Ghost? Yup, I got it too. I got it too. You got the Holy Ghost? Woo, got that Holy Ghost. And you got to be excited about it for the rest of your life. Other things are going to come and go. Oh, jobs, houses, people, blah, 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 blah. But that Holy Ghost? Why is this brother happy all the time? Man, I got that Holy Ghost. 
I got that Holy Ghost and fire. Like old school said, it's keeping me alive. This is the best gift, and you got to be excited about it. My, my great auntie, my grandmother's sister, um, towards the end of her life, we would, I would um, interview her and just do videotapes. I wish I would have did that with my grandmother, but I didn't think about that until after my grandmother passed. So anyways, I would interview her and, and talk about life and say, what do you think about this? But even before that, since I was a little kid, she used to tell me, she said, the Holy Ghost. I remember when I got the Holy Ghost. And, um, you know, I was raised in a Baptist church, so she was so open talking about the Holy Ghost, you know. And she said, she started talking about the Holy Ghost. It's like, she just, you know. But anyway, she said, so even after she's like 78 or something, when I was talking to her at her house, before she ended up going to a convalescent home, and um, she says, I got saved, and I got the Holy Ghost. And she said, and I'm glad about it. She still, even being sick and everything, she said, I'm glad about it. You know, people make you feel like, oh, man, you done got locked up. You done, you know, you got to go to church every Sunday. You got to, like, pray and read the Bible. And uh, man, I'm, she said, I'm still glad about it. When you get the Holy Ghost, you got to stay glad about it. Man, I'm not locked up. This isn't no handcuffs. Man, I'm free. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. You got to be glad about it. When enemy in life starts making you feel heavy, you just start singing. I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says. You just start saying, I got it. I got it. Talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. And you just, I got it. I got it. You need it. You need it, I got it. And all by yourself, find some place and keep that joy of the Lord. Man, you are, we're, we're, we're so blessed. And you got to be excited about this. You going, when I got invited to a Pentecostal church, when I got the Holy Ghost at Christian Life Center, I was seeing other people dancing and shouting. And I'm like, I want to be like that. I want the Holy Ghost. And I got it. And I never looked back. It don't matter who's in here. If there's one person, two people, three people, nobody has to be here. Sometimes I just come by myself. And I just start shouting myself. I dance. I move at my house. We got it. Woo! Look at the person next to you. I got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm going to get to all these points. But anyways, <laughs> all right, let's move forward. The gift of the Holy Ghost is better than money. Woo! Is better than money. Peter and John, when they went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 10, being the ninth hour, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms, asked for money. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto him, expecting to receive something of them, some money, right? Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. People are looking for healing. They're looking for wholeness. They're looking for peace more than money. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up and walked and entered with him into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. The Holy Ghost activates faith in our lives. People can be healed. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that he, he was him that had, which had set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which what had happened unto him. Amen. It's better than money. You know, the old song, they say, silver and gold, silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. In Telugu, it's called, yes, yeah, bangaru, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, bangaru, yes, yeah. Jesus is better than gold. Amen. Jesus is better than gold. When you get access to this faith, you've got some real, real power.
power. That's so much more than money. And people are looking for something more than just the material things. Number five, the gift of the Holy Ghost will make you bold. You know, when you, um, you know, and that's true too about gifts. Sometimes somebody can give you a gift, something physical, and that's good. We want that too. Okay, keep giving that. But that stuff that's not even physical, but like a kid writes you a letter. You know, your, your kid like cook you a dinner or cook, try to cook you bread. Who knows what I'm talking about, right? And it's like, it's so much better sometimes. You're like, wow, that was so sweet, right? So um, the next part is that boldness that comes when you receive the Holy Ghost. You know when you have a gift and it's yours, regardless of what it is, you're like, you try to let somebody come and take that. What would you say? That's what? That's mine, right? And there's something about the Holy Ghost that when you get it, you feel bold about it. You're like, man, this is mine. You know, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, but let me tell you what my God has done for me. And the Holy Ghost makes you bold, right? So you see the disciples, they were bold. We see in Acts chapter 4, verse 8 through 13, it makes you, you have a new identity. You have like more of a purpose and you think about things and you talk different. Peter, at first he was denying the Lord, even though he walked with him. But after he got the Holy Ghost, we see he was bold. Acts chapter 4, verse 8 through 16. Acts chapter 4, verse 8 through 16. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deeds done unto this impotent man, talking about that same man who they healed at the gate called Beautiful, by what means um, he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which is set of naught by you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> Being with Jesus, walking with the Lord, having the spirit of God, it makes you bold. We see Stephen, he was a man full of faith and wisdom. And he, was, he, was, he began to minister to the people. He was just waiting tables and stuff. And he ends up getting stoned. You know, but he was just bold, and he was doing something for the Lord. He began to preach Jesus, amen, and he had a boldness about them. We look at Paul, Paul standing before King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, and he's sitting there, and he's talking to the governor, Festus interrupts him, but Peter was giving his testimony, and he says, you know, I'm not mad, um, most noble Festus, but I speak the words of, of wisdom. I'm sober. He said, but let me tell you about the Lord. I'm not mad. He says, King Agrippa, you believe the prophets? I know you do, don't you? And after a while, King Agrippa said, man, are, are you, you trying to persuade me to be a Christian? He said, not only am I trying to persuade you, but everyone that hears me, except for these chains, except for being locked up, I don't want you to be locked up, okay? But I want you to be free to hear Jesus and accept the truth. He was bold even in imprisonment. The Holy Ghost made him bold to speak before kings, amen? And that boldness will come upon you. Number six, the gift of the Holy Ghost cannot be duplicated. Okay, in Acts chapter 8, verse 18 through 24, we see um, Simon. And Simon's sitting there, and he used, to, um, he, used to, he used to do all this magic and all these different things, and he deceived the people. It said in verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon, uh, which before in the same city um, used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out himself... He was some great one to whom they had gave heed from at least from the least to the greatest saying this man has great power has a great power of God. But anyways, the city of Samaria began to believe the word and they received the Holy Ghost. And even Simon, the one who was bewitching people, he received the Holy Ghost. But when he saw that they received the Holy Ghost, when the disciples laid hands on them, he said, hey, you know, let me give you some money and I can, I can, I can do this too. You know, let me do this trick and then I can be great and all the people can see me. And he was like, you know what? <laughs> the Lord, I rebuke you. He said, you're going to die right now. And he began to say, okay, forgive me. Don't pray that God doesn't take my life. But what happens is when anointing falls and the spirit of God falls, there are people that try to take advantage and manipulate like that and we live in that time you see people on tv talking about selling holy water and get your holy towel and it'll 30 100 you can be anointed like me man they tripping <laughs> 
God go get them. <laughs> That's not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's them trying to do some spells and some magic. Man, this ain't no spells. <laughs> this can't be duplicated. This isn't no magic trick. This isn't something that we just made up that we're doing on our own. So when you see people trying to manipulate that, no. It's, there's nothing similar to the Holy Ghost. It isn't some made up stuff that you can just, oh, I just got this, this replica, right? You know, you have the Nike and then you got the Ike, right? <laughs> no, you got the genuine, the Holy Ghost is genuine and it's specific and it's from God. Hallelujah. Amen. No made up gifts. You know, you have to make up snow, man. I know this isn't a really a ball, it's a rock, but we're just making it up. And I, I mean, the struggle gets real, I get it. But the Holy Ghost, man, it's for everybody. Number seven, the gift of the Holy Ghost is for everyone. It does not discriminate. Everyone can get the Holy Ghost. You know how you have a party? And what me and my wife does do when we have a party for our son or our daughter, uh, we haven't really had that many recently, but we just had one for Gianna this year and last year. But anyways, you know how like at the end, they have like the, the table where the presents, right? And then sometimes some places they like, they wait and everybody look and see who's giving what. And then they open it up and they go, oh, give Thea Linda a hug, tell her thank you. And then go to all these different people, right? We stopped doing that because what if somebody, they just came to spend time, but maybe they didn't have money to buy a gift right now or something. Maybe they might later, it don't even matter. We just want their presents. Not their presents, but their presence, right? <laughs> so. So what we do is we don't open them in front of everyone. We just take them home and then we look at them because we don't want, even if it was just one or two people who probably didn't bring a gift, we don't want them to feel bad, right? Right? But there's this time where when it comes to, um, you know, with God, every single person gets the gift. Every single person, there's a gift for you. The Holy Ghost is for every single person. You get a gift. Right? You know, you go on a tree and like you invite somebody over and you're like, oh man, I don't have a gift for them. I didn't know they were coming, right? Jesus knows that every person that's coming through this door, it don't matter your last name, who you know, your connections, you want the Holy Ghost, you can get it. Now, I know I'm going to have five minutes to wrap this up, but I remember um, <laughs> I had just got saved, just got the Holy Ghost myself, and I was seeking the Holy Ghost like three months. You know, I'm sitting at the altar, oh God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. People praying, right, seeing who works, right? <laughs> but eventually I get the Holy Ghost, right? And it's like, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, right? It took three months, whatever, but it was just God's timing, right? It's all good, no worry. He says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, right? But anyways, man, I was dating this girl. And you know, when you're young and you're struggling, right, you got this new thing because you're now you're living for God. And you're like, man, I don't think we should be kissing. I don't think we should be dating. I got to let her go. But it's a process, right? So I was dating this girl. And like right when I got the Holy Ghost, I see, oh, see. And I went home that night after I got the Holy Ghost. And I said, hey, you know, I think we can't date no more because, you know, you keep touching the fire, you're going to get burnt, you know, and I just got saved, you know, and I got to let you go, you know, I'm trying to live for God, and I'm feeling bad, because still, that's a friend, and you feel close to the person, but you're just, you just have to have those tough conversations, right, and she's like, I'll go to church, oh, you'll go to church, she's trying to get me, right, <laughs> so I brought her to church, that Friday night, we had a youth service, brother Simeon Acosta was our youth pastor, and man, that night, at the altar, this girl came down, first time coming, she got the Holy Ghost the first time. We didn't do no Bible study. We didn't talk about the death, the burial, the resurrection. I don't know how, but just in that one service, her first time coming, she came down and got the Holy Ghost. We're sitting there speaking in tongues and got baptized in Jesus' name that night. I still broke up with her because we had to do that, you know. <laughs> but the, the gift of the Holy Ghost is for everyone. It does not discriminate. It doesn't matter what your ethnic background is. It doesn't matter what your color is, what your weight is, how much money you got in your pocket. God says this for everyone. To, to as many as the Lord our God shall call. We see that the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost. Philip went and preached Christ in Samaria and the Holy Ghost fell. Peter and John and they laid hands on them. They received the Holy Ghost. We see the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost. Cornelius had a dream, and in his dream, God spoke to him and said, go to this town, and there's Peter, and Peter had a dream about, you know, all these different creatures and stuff, and the Lord was like, eat that. He was like, no, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean, and God's like, how are you going to call something unclean that I've called clean? Yeah, he was trying to tell him God has no respectable of person, so when Cornelius came, and he sent his servants, and then he, they got Peter, and they went to his house, and his house received the Holy Ghost. He said, we heard them speaking 
in tongues just like us. We can't hinder them from being baptized. God has no respectable of persons. We see Philip. He saw the Ethiopian eunuch. He was reading the scriptures. He jumped on his on his camel or whatever it was that he had, and he was working for the queen, Candace, right? And they're sitting there, and he's talking, and he says, well, what is this that he's talking about? He began to preach Jesus to him. And the Ethiopian eunuch said, man, there's some water right there. Man, I want to be baptized. The Ethiopia, that means Africa. They received the Holy Ghost. They received the gospel way before colonialism and all that stuff came over. It didn't have to happen like that. God already had people with the Holy Ghost in Africa. That's the Middle East. You wasn't even thinking about America yet. That brother got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God has no dis- um, Some of the darkest moments in human history happen when people practice Christianity without being filled with the Holy Ghost. There are certain things that would not have had to happen if people had the Holy Ghost. Jesus never said, go conquer with this sword and kill people and enslave people. Man, you don't got the Holy Ghost. That's why you're doing that stuff. You have the Holy Ghost. It says lift up holy hands without doubt and without wrath. Hallelujah. Follow after peace with all men. The problem, and the problem throughout history is not being Christianity or faith. It was people without the Holy Ghost. They were in the dark ages. Even when they thought they were enlightened, they were still in darkness. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. When you got the Holy Ghost, you have that compassion. You start loving people. There's certain ways you just can't treat people because you got the Holy Ghost. And last, number number seven, number eight, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost will send you to places to minister. And we see in Acts chapter 13, verse 3 through 4, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will send you out to do a work for the Lord. Jesus, when he stepped on the scene full of the Spirit, as a young man, he was in the temple in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. After, after going to the cross and dying and rising, he come back and he speak to his disciples. He said, go ye therefore throughout the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved and these signs shall follow them that believe those that are in the spirit those that are full of the holy ghost these signs shall follow they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover they shall cast out demons if they drink any deadly thing it shall not harm them they shall take up service anybody excited about having the holy ghost hallelujah as we stand hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in conclusion, the gift of the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is more than anything you've heard. The best gift, the Holy Ghost is the best gift that we've ever received. It's worth being excited about. And the Holy Ghost is better than money. It makes you bold. It can't be duplicated. It's for everyone. It does not discriminate. And the Holy Ghost will send you places to minister hallelujah hallelujah the worst thing that anybody can do is to reject the gift that God has given one of the worst things you try to give somebody a gift and they say I don't want it you start thinking man what do you have against me your father knows how to give good gifts Sometimes you go through so much in life and you've not had gifts and you've had so much hurt and so much pain and things go bad so much that you start saying, I don't want to get my hopes up. Man, I can't, I, can't, I can't always expect for something good to happen. I want to let you know, yes, you can with Jesus. If you want that gift that keeps on giving with the Holy Ghost, come on down. You're saying, thank you, God, for the blood 
that gift of your blood, that sacrifice that you made for us, that we can have access to your spirit. If you want that gift, hallelujah, you have that gift and you're saying, I'm still excited about it. I'm still glad about it. Thank you for this gift, Lord. I know during Christmas time, people are focusing on so many other things, but a godliness with contentment is great gain. Thank you for this Holy Ghost. Thank you for what the Holy Ghost has produced in my character. Thank you for what the Holy Ghost has produced in my life. Thank you for how you've led me, how you've how you've guided me. Thank you for the boldness that you've given me through your spirit. Thank you for your influence in our lives, Lord. Thank you for sending us out. Hallelujah. If you're one God to continue to send you, hallelujah, through the Holy Ghost. Oh, to reach people. There are people that God are giving dreams and he's giving visions and, and are saying, we're over here. Will the Holy Ghost send you to minister to me? Will you find a place of prayer? Will you find a place alone with God and allow the Holy Ghost to convict your spirit? Always say, God, there are some people who need this gospel. Use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. We're serving the living God. Hallelujah. This is not some made up stuff that can be duplicated. This is not some fairy tale. This is not, we're not hypnotizing you. This isn't some stuff that we just conceived with our own minds. We're not brainwashing you. The Holy Ghost is real. And God wants to show you how real he is. If you have not received the Holy Ghost yet, God wants to fill you. And it can happen right now. It can happen on your way home. It can happen tonight. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you as we pray. We thank you for coming into this world. Oh, Lord God, hallelujah. For sending, Lord God, hallelujah, your spirit to live in us, to comfort us. Go ahead and sing, brother. Hallelujah. To comfort us, to lead and to guide us. Thank you. You said, I will not leave you as orphans, for I will come to you. Hallelujah. And if you're seeking him, you're going to find him. For all those that seek, they shall find. All those that knock, the door shall be open. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, we thank you. I pray for this church, Lord God. I pray for every person here, Lord. Instead of complaining about the world and what's going on, just think, man, they don't got the Holy Ghost yet. People need the Holy Ghost. We just got to pray for the Holy Ghost. The sad times happen because people need the Holy Ghost. The tragedies are happening, and instead of complaining or getting involved with politics, forget all that stuff. What needs to happen is more people need an altar. More people need an experience with Jesus in their home, in their church, at the job place, in the school. Where can you pray? Where can God pour out his spirit and change us? It's not going to happen as a Democrat, as a Republican. No president's going to do that. It's the church. We are the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. When we pray, things happen. When the spirit of God moves, things happen. Oh, God, use us, Lord God. How shall people know that, Lord God, we are your disciples, that love that we have, and it comes from your spirit. Bless us, Lord God. Be with us, Lord God, as we go home, Lord God, as we move among our family and friends and work, Lord God, workplaces, Lord God. Allow your spirit to lead us and to guide us and to use us. Activate us every day to speak truth, to speak hope, to speak life, Lord. Thank you for giving us this precious gift. Oh, Lord God, it's more. Oh, there's so much more that you have. Help us, each and every one of us, Lord, every day to wake up and say, God, I'm still discovering more. Walking with you. Having your touch. Brother, can you sing that song? Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's just take some time to worship. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Go ahead, brother. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Sing it. Hallelujah. Sing it. Fill us with your love. Hallelujah. Sister, can you come sing? Somebody, we need some bonus. Come on. Sing Holy Spirit. Come on. Shall. Shall. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. From